So we have a real treat now, um, a talk that I think all of you will uh, will enjoy. And uh, we're honored to have Phil Plate here with us. And Phil's an astronomer. He uh, he has the moniker the bad astronomer, and I've personally followed him for on Twitter for uh, some time now. He was part of the Hubble Space Telescope team where he worked with images and spectra of astronomical objects. He's been really devoting a lot of time to education and public outreach, and uh, he's published a couple of books. One is called Bad Astronomy, and the other is Death from the Skies. He's appeared in numerous science documentaries and, uh, and other um, TV and, and other appearances. I think his talk today is going to be particularly fun for uh, all of you, this audience, both here and, and online. And it's entitled The Moon Hoax Hoax. So, Phil, please, well, let's welcome him. Howdy, everybody. Taking that off. I don't think I want to wear that while I'm doing this. All right, now I was told what to do, so I'll do this and then I'll do this. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, I actually live in this area. I live about an hour north of here. I've been to the university a zillion times. I've done panels here, but I don't think I've ever actually spoken on stage by myself. So this is this is very exciting, and uh, I don't remember the last time I had an interpreter either. And so uh, you're going to have a lot of fun with this, I think. I don't know what the <laughs> I don't know what the sign is for banging head on desk, but uh, that will probably come up a lot uh, with this. Um, this this talk uh, is based on uh, a conspiracy theory that has been around for a long time uh, since the Apollo missions, in fact. Um, but really, really, really got started uh, in the public consciousness, I think. It, it, there were a couple of mentions of it. You can find it. There's a James Bond movie where they mention it. And I think Dan Aykroyd mentions it in, in Loose Cannon, if you've ever seen that. Uh, apparently not. Uh, okay. Um, not a big Dan Aykroyd fans here. Um, and uh, it, it really took off in, uh, in 2001 when Fox TV aired a, uh, a, a documentary um, that was loosely based on facts. And by loosely, I mean not even in the same universe, some parallel universe where science facts and, and evidence don't matter uh, about uh, the moon landings being faked. And I, I wound up getting a copy of this thing before it aired through a friend of mine and watched it basically just slack jawed. Like this is absolutely ridiculous stuff. And I had already been looking into it, uh, researching it a little bit because I was writing my first book uh, about con conspiracy theories and misconceptions, including including the people who thought the moon landings were faked. And when this, as soon as I heard about the show, I was like, oh, here we go. This is going to be not any fun at all. Uh, and it turns out it, it's, it's not. Um, so I try to make it as fun as possible. Um, They happen. There we go. Okay. Um, and so I used to have all that uh, not, not, that trivia, trivia, all the, all of the all those things at my fingertips, um, and it's still available online, and it's terrific. Um, uh, but uh, uh, so when the show aired, I actually had a few days, and I put together a website. Now this is in the year two thousand or two thousand one. Uh, websites were not really there yet. And uh, they're the only two astronomy or space websites that existed were basically NASA and me. And so uh, I, I put up this, this sort of lengthy debunking of this show and uh, it, it wound up becoming very popular. I was really shocked by this. Uh, it was like the first thing I ever did that went viral. Uh, I think it's probably the last thing I ever did that went viral too. And um, I wound up getting a lot of email. One email I, uh, I just very briefly was saying, Hey, I liked how you debunked this one thing about not being able to tell how far away the rocks were on the moon when we were there looking around, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, wait, what? And then I scrolled down to the bottom and it was from Charlie Duke, who was uh, Apollo 16 astronaut. It's like, oh, uh, okay. Um, so uh, that was fun, I suppose. But uh, this thing really took hold and it became, I think, the first 
really viral conspiracy theory on the internet. And there have been many more since then. Uh, and it, it seems a little silly, people thinking that the moon landings were fake, which is what this is all about. Uh, and, you know, it's, you know, how important is this that some people think the moon landing was fake? Well, for a long time, this thing really had teeth and, and a lot of kids were buying into it. I was getting a lot of email and a lot of traffic. Um, and it, it's kind of like, you know, the flat earth, you know, why argue with flat earth people? And it's like, well, I don't, um, uh, because that's, that's kind of a waste of time, but you can take some of the, some of the big points that they make, debunk them, just show where they're wrong and then put it someplace where everybody can see it. Uh, and I find that that's actually, uh, that's actually works pretty well for me. I try not to get cornered at a bar by these people, although that's happened. Um, yeah, that's, that's always an interesting experience. The point is here, as I will show you, um, these conspiracy theories rely on a lot of um, tried and true tactics that mislead, bamboozle, fool the person who is listening to these arguments. Um, the biggest one, and, 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 and so I should say that one of the reasons I debunk stuff that seems kind of silly sometimes is because it's not so much that I want to show you that the moon landings were real because... <laughs> they were. Um, it's more along the lines of you hear something and you go, is that really true? You need the toolkit to be able to, to uh, basically skeptically look at these arguments, think about them critically and figure out what's going on. Or if you're talking to somebody else, or if you hear about something like the flat earth, you're know, proving the earth is round um, is not trivial necessarily. And a lot of the arguments against it uh, are, are, it can be a little bit difficult conceptually to understand for a lot of people. And so sometimes you just need to really uh, kind of circle around the argument, look at it from all angles, and then say, what's the easiest line of attack? Uh, and when it comes to the moon hoax, they make it super easy. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to talk about. So this is Buzz Aldrin. Uh, you may have heard of him. He claims to have walked on the moon uh, this would be photographic evidence of him walking on the moon. This man is Bart Sabrell. Have you heard of Bart Sabrell, anybody? No, you haven't heard Bart Sabrell. 20 years ago, you would have heard Bart Sabrell when this was all raging, this, this conspiracy theory. He claims to be a photographer, and there's proof of him because he's standing behind a camera, and no human would stand behind a camera unless they're actually a photographer. Um, in fact, uh, uh, he, he, makes, he, 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 ma he made a lot of uh, documentaries and stuff back in the day, 20 years ago, uh, and he was one of the biggest proponents of the idea that NASA faked the Apollo missions. Um, it, it, uh, he, he makes a lot of arguments. He, uh, you find him online back in the day. He, he did a lot of interviews and such like that, um, making, a lot of our, making a lot of the arguments that you're going to hear about in this TV show that basically based on a lot of the stuff that he said, there were some other folks and all, uh, a couple of them show up in the documentary. I'll point them out, but there were like four, four guys who were basically the big proponents of this. Now you may not know Bart's name. You may not know his face. Oh, but you know this I'm sure, or chances are you've seen this. Um, Mr. Sabrell uh, was making a documentary about the fake moon landings. And he was stalking Buzz Aldrin, followed him to where Buzz was giving a talk and literally, literally hid in the bushes and jumped out with a cameraman and asked uh, Buzz Aldrin to swear on a Bible that he went to the moon. And Buzz Aldrin said, uh -uh. and Bart said, well, sir, that is because you are a liar and a thief and a coward. That's a quote. And on coward, this is what happened. Um, yeah, when you, when, when, when you talk to a guy who made his living as a test pilot and was one of the first two human beings to actually strap themselves into a lunar module and land on the moon, you get what you deserve. Um, so uh, the headlines that showed up uh, around there were great. Buzz Aldrin assaults moonwalk skeptic, a punch in the face. Lunar landing skeptic says Buzz Aldrin attacked him. It's kind of true. Um, astronaut assault hoax. I kind of like that one. My favorite was pow, zoom to the moon. Um, you see, the thing that Sabrell forgot is that the astronauts have a huge amount of training and we're ready for basically any kind of circumstance. Okay. So the TV show, uh, I'm going to be showing clips from this show. 
Uh, I'm legally allowed to do that because I'm going to be talking about them and critiquing them under the Fair Use Act, but you actually have to say this out loud before doing it, and that is certain materials are included under the Fair Use Exemption of the U.S. Copyright Law and are prepared according to multimedia use fair use guidelines and are restricted from further use. So as far as you know, what I'm doing up here is legal. Um, here's the title slide to the show, Conspiracy Theory, Did We Land on the Moon? Um, this uh, aired on Fox TV. It was hosted by... Um, oh, for uh, 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 Mitch Pelegi, who was um, assistant director Skinner from the X-Files. Uh, any Stargate fans here? He was on Stargate. Um, great actor, fantastic voice. Um, I don't know if he really thinks we landed on the moon or not, but he's the one who he's just narrated this. You'll be hearing his voice in the clips. Um, the show opens with this very disingenuous slide. The following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Let me repeat that last bit because this is important. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Note what it does not say. We are going to give you all of the available information. No, they are not. And that is that becomes a running theme throughout this whole show. And it's, it is super standard for conspiracy theories, especially ones based on science, to give you like 90% of the information you know you need to know to make an informed decision. And that 10% is it's like it's like the sleight of hand from a magician. That, you know, if you knew that 10%, you go, oh, well, clearly this is wrong. Um, but if they hold that back, some of the stuff can be very convincing. So here is. And and uh, some of you I can see are, are out here pretty young, and some of you look like you're my age and about to turn to dust like I am. Um, how many of you all here have seen the movie Capricorn One? Oh yes, let's let's all admit who's a member of AARP now. Okay, great. Um, uh, this movie, uh, uh, well, they, they talk about it. So I just want to see who here knew about it. But um, you probably never even heard of this movie. It's actually a fun conspiracy thriller. Uh, uh, it has a lot of big stars in it at the time. Um, and it's, it's that NASA faked a mission to Mars. So let's see what this TV show has to say about that. This theory inspired the 1978 movie, Capricorn One, in which the government attempts to fool the world by faking a mission to Mars. We do not claim this planet Claim it in the name of all the people of the planet Earth. The Apollo footage is strikingly similar to the scenes in Capricorn One. Okay, so that's the first head banging on desk moment here. That, oh, good. Okay, I can, yeah, excellent. Uh, also works for I Dream of Genie, I believe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. Um, yeah, I, I love how if you listen carefully, if you to conspiracy theorists when they're talking or, or anything written down or anything like that, if you read their stuff once, it, sometimes it's easy to get fooled. And if you go back and go from the beginning and sometimes you can say, oh, well, you've debunked what you've said here at the start. And they do that in this clip. They say this theory inspired Capricorn One movie, and then later says, right, some of the clips from from uh, the the Apollo the Apollo missions are eerily similar to Capricorn One. Yes, clips from the Apollo missions in the late 1960s and early 1970s are eerily similar to a movie made in 1978. Okay, yes, they made the movie similar to the Apollo. They even used a lunar lander. Look at that. Um, to because the public was familiar with that equipment, and so to see a Saturn V launch, you didn't have to go to a lot of explanations of what the rocket was or how the mission works. The public just accepts that, and you can focus more on the plot of your movie, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, so just to even spend five seconds talking about Capricorn One in you know, a documentary that's supposed to be about NASA faking the moon mission makes no sense whatsoever, and yet makes almost more sense than anything else they talk about in the whole show. Um, now, you want conspiracy theories. It stars The movie stars uh, Elliot Gould. You may know him from the movie MASH, if again, you're like me, or if you're younger, he was uh, Elliot, uh, Elliot Gould was uh, uh, Monica and Ross's father in Friends, uh, and James Brolin, who's a terrific actor. Uh, you know what these two men have in common? Anyone, anyone? 
They were in Capricorn one. That's exactly right. Um, and, and we're back to square one. I guess that makes as much sense as anything else. Um, no, they're both married to Barbra Streisand. That to me is a conspiracy theory. Of course, you don't want to bring too much attention to that or else you'll wind up uh, dealing with the Streisand effect. No, I, I took a chance with that joke. The Streisand effect is actually a, is, is this idea that if, if somebody says something mean about you, ignore it online, because if you call attention to it, shine a spotlight on it, then everybody hears about it. And that's what Barbara Streisand did a few years ago. And it, it turns out that now she has a, a, a fallacy named after her. There you go. Um, and you deal with this with conspiracy theories a lot too. All right. Um, I didn't want to show the clip for this because it's way too long and it was hard to edit. And I, and I should say, I apologize for the low resolution, but I, oh, I had to get all of these clips off of a, a VHS videotape. Uh, I could not find any, any digital recordings of this show. Uh, and it's been years and I've tried and I haven't been able to find anything. So uh, that's, that's why they look like, um, you know, your childhood, I guess, uh, from the 1990s. But um, some of these pictures are from NASA. And I should say that if the images here, if you don't see any credit, it's either a NASA image or something taken by me, and I, I, I trust you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, so here's an image from uh, Apollo 11. This is, I believe, Buzz Aldrin standing on the moon. I think that's Buzz, yeah, uh, next to the lunar lander leg. And one of the big conspiracy ideas that you hear uh, from the moon hoax folks is, if you're on the moon and there's no atmosphere, why don't you see stars in the images? And you know, sure enough, you look in the sky and see this may be too bright. Oh, that's okay. There's the lunar horizon there for the folks who are watching via Zoom. You don't see that. Um, uh, it's just the top of the image above Buzz's head. It's all black. And you say, well, if there's no atmosphere there blocking the starlight, you sh and, and this is what one of the guys said, you should see millions of stars in the sky and you don't. Clearly this has been faked. And it's like, well, you know, if you dig into this a little bit, you can find an image like this. This is from one of the Russian uh, probes to the moon. I want to say Zon 4 uh, that uh, uh, orbited and landed on the moon. And you can see, again, there are no stars in that black wedge of sky there. And if I were to ask you in the 1960s why the United States went to the moon, can you answer in four words? To beat the Russians. To Well or to beat the Soviet Union, it's five words. Um, but yes, it's to beat the Russians. That's why we went uh, and, and in, in the bottom line. And so if it was to beat the Russians and the Russians went to the moon, why would they, or did, did they fake it too and not put stars? They forget to put stars in the sky in their backdrop when they faked this, I guess in Kazakhstan or wherever they would have faked it. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and, and in fact, um, if the evidence, you can think of that this way too. If the evidence was so, obvious that the United States was faking these missions. Why didn't the Soviets say anything? You think they might have said something and saved themselves billions of dollars in the space race. And I, I, I think it was Bart Sabrell when asked this, he said, why didn't the Soviets say anything? And he said, well, we bought them off with wheat. And it's like, ah, yeah. How do you argue against that? And the answer is, yeah, you, you don't. It's best to just walk away. Oh, and let me short out my computer here. That's always a good idea to spill water on the computer. Excellent. Um, why don't you see stars in the Apollo images? It's because we didn't go to the moon to look at the stars. We can do that from Earth. That's easy. Um, but if you go to the moon, uh, it turns out, you, you um, well, there is no atmosphere. So even during the day, the sky is black. The sky is blue during the day because the sun is up. There are constituents in the Earth's atmosphere that scatter blue light all over the sky. And so anywhere you look in the sky, you see blue light coming at you. On the moon, you don't get that. It's only black even during the day. Um, why don't you see stars? Well, if you're on the moon standing there, you could if you blocked out the bright lunar landscape and maybe blocked out the sun and looked at a little tiny wedge of the sky and let your eyes adapt for a long time. But the, the thing is, the astronauts were there on the daylit side of the moon. So their eyes were adapted to a brightly lit landscape. And so they very, very difficult to see the stars. It's the same thing with a camera, right? If you want to take a picture of stars at night, what do you do? You open your aperture up all the way so it's nice and wide to let, out as, let in as much light as possible. And you take a long exposure. Um, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. Um, now today with digital cameras, you don't have to take that long of an exposure, but in the sixties, they were using film. 
And film is notoriously insensitive to light. You have to take long time exposures to see stars in those pictures. If they had opened up their aperture all the way and taken long exposures on the moon, everything would have been overexposed on the moon. And we went to the moon to look at the moon, to get pictures of the moon. That's why they went. And so they, they, they set their apertures to be very small. They took very short exposures, roughly 125th of a second, uh, typically. And so the stars just don't show up on uh, an exposure that short. If you took those gorgeous Hasselblad cameras that they used back then, put in the same kind of film today, went to the darkest site on earth, pointed your camera up and used the same settings to take a picture, you would see exactly as many stars as they did on the moon. And the answer is a couple in some of the images. You can kind of see stars in them. Now you can see stars from space, you but again, you have to take a time exposure. This was uh, from the space shuttle. This is one of the uh, the two astro missions. That telescope is an ultraviolet telescope. And um, this is a 30 second exposure. And you can see Orion there on the right. It's a lovely shot, a little bit streaked. Is it 30 seconds? It might be shorter. But uh, in that case, the, the stars are streaked because of the shuttle's orbital motion around the Earth, right? So the stars are streaking in that image. And the telescope you can see because it's being illuminated by the moon. So uh, again, if this were daylight, that shuttle uh, payload bay, that telescope would be brightly lit and would be very difficult to see stars. So this is technically taken at night. Um, I, did, <laughs> I did have a conspiracy theorist uh, uh, approach me and say, listen, we do have pictures of stars taken from the Apollo missions. What about this one? And it's like, well, that's Apollo 13. Uh, you can tell because the, the service module there has a panel blown out. You can see all the all the uh, uh, machinery inside that could, because of the explosion that wound up uh, souring that mission and they couldn't land on the moon. And, and he said, look at all the stars in this picture. Look at all the stars around there. And I was like, yeah, look at all the stars in that image, including inside the engine nozzle, right? These are little tiny stars. Um, in fact, that's just dust. Um, this is not an original image. Most of the images that you see uh, the people use in these conspiracy theories uh, are not original. They're actually prints of prints of prints of prints. You know, the original negative is sitting somewhere in an archive and they made a print from it. And then somebody took a picture of it. And again, and again, and again, dust gets in there and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of claims, um, if you've ever heard of the sea rock, I won't even go into that. It's so ridiculous. Um, but a lot of claims by conspiracy, conspiracy theorists about fake moon landings have to do with pictures that aren't original. And so, um, again, this is an indication that, you know, they're not telling you everything you need to know. Like, you know, why, in, instead of saying, you know, here's how you can see stars from the lunar surface, they just ask, we're just asking questions. Why don't you see stars? Interesting, isn't it? And, and they use images like this. They don't use original source material. And that is a lot of the time in conspiracy theories where these things fall apart. If they go to the original source material, you can see instantly that what they're claiming is wrong, which weirdly, uh, they, they never encourage you to do. So, Conspiracy theorists point out that lighting is a major flaw in the lunar photos. Case in point, on the moon, the astronauts' only source of light was the sun. They had that wasn't no the sun, by the way. Lighting. Uh, no flashes or things like that. Yet in this photograph from Apollo 14, the shadows are cast in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the limb shadows. And in this photo from Apollo 17, again the shadows are pointing in different directions. Outside in sunlight, shadows always run parallel with one another. So the shadows will never intersect. Okay, that, that there at the end, that was, uh, that was Bart Sabrell. Um, this segment is what is known in the critical thinking circles as a Gish Gallup. Uh, Gish is a creationist who, uh, who argues that evolution is wrong. And what he does is he throws out a thousand incorrect statements so rapidly that you can't possibly debunk them all and you get bamboozled. And this clip is sim similar to this. It starts off by saying, um, if the only source of light on the, on the moon is the sun, right? How come all of this stuff happens? There must've been artificial lights on the moon. And they talk about the shadows not being parallel. Uh, and then uh, Sabrell says the shadows, uh, the shadows uh, intersect. And they, they don't actually ever intersect. Well, what they're trying to say is the shadows are not parallel. 
if the sun is really far away and it's shining down on the moon, then all the, all the shadows on the surface of the moon should be parallel. And they're not, clearly. You can see that they're not here. Um, this is a fairly baffling statement to people. When you say something like that and show them these images, people get confused. They're like, oh, that is really weird. Why aren't the shadows parallel? And I'll tell you why, because they are parallel. Um, here's an image I took uh, outside my house in a park that NASA helped me fake in the 1960s. Um, and you can see these, these uh, lighting poles here. And um, I can, I, I've highlighted the shadows there. And you can see the one on the left points sort of uh, closer to vertical than horizontal. The one on the right is closer to horizontal than vertical. How did this happen? Um, turn around, took another picture. Again, the shadows are not parallel. There is no trickery here. I have not done anything except take pictures of, of these. And the, the secret to this is perspective. If you go to a different angle and you look at, for example, the, the fence posts there, those fence posts are all vertical. I can, uh, if I, excuse me, let me show you that a little bit better. Um, it's hard to see here, but those, those shadows there look parallel. But if I go up next to the fence and look more or less along it, I see this. And now the shadows aren't parallel. In fact, the one at the bottom is almost vertical. The one at the top is almost horizontal. Uh, and uh, that shouldn't be. They should all be parallel. And the answer is they are. They are parallel. What's going on here is perspective. Uh, if you extend those images to the horizon, they go to a place called the vanishing point, which in this case is directly underneath the sun. This is a well-known artistic uh, uh, phenomenon where parallel lines don't look parallel because of perspective. You are sitting in a room right now where you can see this, the, where the wall meets the ceiling and where the floor meets the wall, those lines are parallel. And yet I see that line going down and I see that line going up. If I could extend those to infinity, they would meet at the horizon. The same thing over here. I can look at, when I look at the, the far wall though, they look parallel to me. And that's because they're at the same distance. And there's no vanish, there's no vanishing point effect because they're they're parallel to my line of sight as opposed to moving away from me. It's all that's going on here. If you've ever drawn a cube on a piece of paper, right? And you have to make you have to, you know, these the lines going off to the at an angle or anything like that. That's exactly what you're seeing here. And if, if this is indication that NASA faked the moon landings, it's very clear they've been faking the entire railroad system since the mid-1800s. Right, obviously you can see the rail 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 uh, tracks going off to the in, to the horizon, and they they appear to converge. I don't know how you would build a train to go on those kind of tracks, um, but you know NASA engineers are smart. I'm sure they figured it out. All right, let's go to the next the next and 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 again, um, they don't give you all the information you need to understand what's going on. Once you understand what's going on, it's really super obvious. Right. That's why they don't give you all the information you need. Also, they interviewed a guy who was who was saying, I don't understand how they did this. And it turns out, um, yeah, because that guy designs camera lenses. He's not necessarily a photographer. He doesn't know all the ins and outs of these sorts of things. And again, if you're sitting on a stool with a camera in your face and somebody's asking you a bunch of questions, at some point it's very easy to say, I don't know, I don't get that. Uh, and then if they take that and edit that cleverly, it makes it look like, you know, you're an expert, but you, you don't understand. Um, I should say this happened to me uh, in the heyday of all of this nonsense in, in, in the early 2000s, I was interviewed by a German TV show uh, and they, they were talking to me and asking me a bunch of questions. And um, about a week later or two weeks later, I started getting emails from people from Germany saying, what happened? I was like, what are you talking about? And they said, they made you look like a fool, like you couldn't answer any of these questions. And it turns out, yeah, they cleverly edited me to make it look like I didn't know what I was talking about. And I, I, I want to think I did. Um, I, you know, I read a lot. Uh, but it, 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 when you watch shows like this, when you see websites like this or YouTube videos or whatever, you know, they are working behind the scenes to convince you really, really hard that what they're saying is true when it, it isn't. All right. Conspiracy theorists the say it's not just the shadows that indicate the use of additional lights, but what has been photographed in the shadows. For example, here's an astronaut who descends into a huge shadow cast by the lunar module. Yet his entire body is still visible. How is it that he is not shrouded in darkness? Here's the same maneuver from another Apollo mission. Again, the astronaut is brightly lit in what is obviously dark shadow. And in this picture, 
The sun is directly That's not behind the, the sun. astronaut. His figure should be a silhouette. Yet even the smallest characteristics of his suit are recognizable. It seems like he's standing in the spotlight. And I can't explain that. Uh, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? Doesn't escape me why. Um, this this was the the gentleman who uh, wor worked on designing lenses that were used for the Apollo missions. He's again not a photographer, and he says, "I don't understand. It looks like he's standing in a spotlight, but I don't understand how that can be." And um, it turns out uh, this is another one of those claims that you kind of have to scratch your head and go, "What what is going on here?" Yes, absolutely. Uh, these astronauts are climbing down the ladder from the lunar lander. And you can clearly see they're standing in the shadow and the shadow on the ground, you can see the, the module shadow on the ground, absolutely black. You see zero of the lunar landscape inside that shadow. Oh, and, and incidentally, I keep saying that's not the sun. Uh, they keep showing this blob in the, in the image and that's, that's an internal reflection of the sun inside the camera. You've seen this a million times, lens flares, right? Uh, you, you point your camera near something bright and the light comes in and bounces around inside the lens and you wind up getting a bright spot in the image. Um, I love the fact that they're, 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 they're making a documentary about this and they, they don't even really understand what the sun is or isn't. Um, that should give you a, a, a good idea of the level of, of, of research they did here. Um, but this idea that, that the astronauts, you can see them in the shadow is interesting. On Earth, if you go outside right now, and um, if, if the sun is out, you will see your shadow on the ground, um, but you can see stuff in it. It's not perfectly black. Uh, and the reason you can is because we have the sky uh, the atmosphere scattering the sunlight. The sky is very bright. It acts like a second source of light and it, it, it fills in the shadow a little bit. You've probably seen pictures of photographers shooting a model or something like that. And there's some flunky on the side with a big reflector. It's actually called, it's, it's called a fill reflector. I kind of like that. Um, and they're filling in the light because if you have shadow on one side of your, one side of your face and it's lit from the other, that doesn't look great in, in, in photos. So they have somebody on the other side with a reflector to, to fill in that shadow. Um, and that happens on the earth because we have the sky, but again, on the moon with no atmosphere, uh, the sky is black. And so there is no other source of light. Or is there? I can make it sound like a conspiracy as well. I wish I had some dramatic music playing in the background. Um, my first thought when I saw this was, oh, well, the Earth is up in the sky. Uh, they landed on the near side of the moon, which means the Earth is visible. Um, and it turns out when you look at how bright the Earth is from the moon, it's about 50 times brighter than the full moon, which is a lot. If the Earth is full, I should say. If the Earth is not full, it's, it's less. Um, but I started fiddling with the numbers and I realized, yeah, that's not actually enough light to, uh, to do what we're seeing in these images. And it turns out um, the other source of light is the moon. And that seems kind of weird, but it's true. Here is, here we go. Um, here is the classic image of Buzz Aldrin, the man in the moon image. Um, and you can see him standing there. Uh, the sun is shining um, from the right on his left. So his left is illuminated. You can see his shadow. And uh, the shadow is very, very dark. You don't see any lunar any dust or rocks or anything in that. Again, there's an exposure issue here. This is a photograph, which is different than actually standing and being there. Um, but again, you know, look, look on the left and you can see his right arm, the glove, everything on the other side of his suit is perfectly visible. How is this possible if the sun is coming from behind him and on the other side? And the answer is the moon is also uh, a light source. This is another image taken Apollo 17, I think it's later on in the missions, but this is an astronaut who was facing um, down sun. So you think of the sunlight as streaming down to the moon. And if you're looking at the sun, that's up sun and then down sun is the other direction. So he's facing his own shadow, took the picture and you can see his shadow there. And what's interesting is that bright glow around his, around his helmet, uh, the shadow of his helmet, right? Um, that is called Heiligenschein, it's German for halo. Uh, it's also called the opposition effect or the opposition surge. And what happens is uh, there are a couple of things going on here. One is that tiny little particles like the lunar regolith tend to reflect light back in the direction they came from. So that light is coming down from the sun, hitting the ground, and then bouncing back in that same direction. And so that makes it look like there's a lot of light coming from right around where he's holding the camera, which is up to his face. 
And so uh, it really looks like um, he's got a halo around his head. Um, that is actually a very bright effect. And that is what is filling in these images. If he's standing like this, looking looking down his shadow, right? This part of his suit is is facing away from the sun. The sun's illuminating his back. But all of that bright lunar surface is then lighting up the front of his suit. And that's why if there were an astronaut standing by the lunar lander taking a picture of this astronaut, you'd be able to see him very clearly. Um, this happens over and over again in these images. And if you look at the detailed images, you can actually figure out where the light is coming from. And, and you always find out, yeah, it's coming from the lunar surface. Or sometimes when they're standing next to the lunar module, that's also reflecting light to them as well. Um, here's another picture of that park that uh, NASA helped me fake. This is the in, infield of a softball field there. Um, and I had my wife take this picture. She is facing up sun and I'm facing her. And you can see my shadow and you can see how dark the dirt looks there. But then from the side, that's interesting. The dirt looks a little bit brighter. And then she handed me the camera and I took this and kaboom, I like and shine, opposition effect. You see that the, 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 the dirt, the dust is very fine powder that's all around me, all around my head is shining that light right back to me. And the farther out I look, the, the, the dimmer it looks because that light is not coming toward me. It's going away from me. So the, all the light that I'm looking straight down. My shadow is coming right back at me and it's really well illuminated. I love this picture because it kind of looks like the moon. You can see the rover tracks and the boot prints and, and my daughter, I let play on the lunar surface because I'm a terrible father. Um, so that's what's going on here. This is one of the more clever conspiracy ideas. And a lot of conspiracy theories will do this. They have some ideas that you kind of have to dig into to find out what's going on. The answer isn't always that obvious. So sometimes you do have to sit down and do your research. But when you do, you, you always wind up coming to the same conclusion that these people are full of it. Um, here's one of my favorites. But there's another reason some believe the Apollo missions were shot on Earth. If there is no air or wind on the moon, why is this American flag waving? The fact that the flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere means that there must have been a little blast of wind out in Area 51 where they shot this. Because of course, Area 51 Could these questionable show. images simply be the result of astronauts struggling to plant the flag into the lunar surface? Yes! Or is there more going on than meets the eye? No! There's less going on here than meets the eye. Um, there's no atmosphere on the moon. I'm pretty sure about this. Um, and if you want to argue about exosphere, come see me afterwards. Um, there's no atmosphere on the moon. So why is that flag waving? How is this possible? And uh, the gentleman there that you saw was Bill Casing. Uh, he is considered the father of the moon hoax. He worked for a contractor, I believe, for NASA in the 1960s during the Apollo missions. And he, he claimed to have a secret clearance and didn't believe uh, these claims that NASA was making, even as they were happening. It turns out, in, in a sense, he was like a file clerk. And a lot of the times you have to have secret clearance because you're handling files that are secret. Uh, it doesn't mean you're in on anything or, you, or you know, you're know you a big intelligence officer or anything like that. Uh, and he made a lot of um, less than lucid claims about uh, space travel. And in fact, I, I believe it was him who said, uh, at one point that NASA blew up the Challenger shuttle on purpose uh, because of uh, the teacher in space. Uh, she would have gone up and seen that, you know, they, that there were no stars and they, it was all being faked. And so they, they killed her or something. Uh, it, yeah. A lot of these things don't hold a lot of water. doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and, and also a lot of these conspiracy theories are really just evil, just awful, uh, uh, heartless ideas uh, that, that, that they think that this, this kind of thing can go on. It's really, it, it, they can be exasperating, but they can also be uh, very, very uh, irritating and angry. Um, so what's going on with this? Why is the flag waving, as he says? Well, let me show you something. Um, I don't usually take off my belt uh, in public, but here we are. I have a belt. I guess I should, so that the Zoom folks can hear. I'll hold this up here. This is a belt. It's real, right? It's holding up my pants. So I'm just going to gonna make sure that they don't fall down because that's a, a different conspiracy theory. Um, Let's say I'm on the moon, right? I'm hold, I hold this thing out. Well, let's say there's a wind from Area 51 oh, because, you know, it's the UFO guys. It's the aliens. They're, they're the reason they did this. Um, oh, is that, is, that, is that aliens with like the antenna? Oh, cool. 
I like that. I like that as much as the I dream of genie thing. Okay. Um, that, that's just, that's fantastic. I love it. Um, okay. As you can tell, I have a lot of, uh, I can, I can blow a lot of hot air. Let me try here. 20 years of playing trombone. Okay. I can blow nothing, right? Hardly moves at all. Now watch this magic. Watch this. Oh my gosh. Look at it move. Ooh, what's going on? You know what's going on? It's, it's inertia is what's going on. It's inertia. One of Newton's laws, something we've known about for 400 years, folks. I move the top of the belt and it takes a, a moment for the bottom to catch up. And so it lags. And as I move my hand back and forth, the belt flops back and forth. Very simple, very straightforward. That is exactly what's going on here. Here is, oh, it doesn't like going to the next slide after the video. There we go. Um, here's a classic picture of Buzz Aldrin saluting the American flag. You can see it there. The, the way this thing was set up is they had poles that they tried to drive into the lunar surface. And it turns out that was one of the first scientific things we learned about the regolith is that it does not compact well. They had a really hard time getting this pole into the surface. And then there was a, a rod that would then, they'd lift up a horizontal rod that would latch into place. And then the flag would be, was draped over it and they could extend it that way. Um, and it looks like it's flapping in the breeze there. It really kind of does. And I've had many people send this to me and say, clearly this flag is, is flapping in the breeze. And I'm saying, clearly you have a still photograph. You don't know what the flag was doing. Show me video of somebody standing back from the flag and it moving and we can talk. But the only time you ever see a flag moving on the moon is when somebody is manip manipulating that, that assembly there. And that's because of inertia. In fact, this is the assembly here. It was a, a, like an aluminum box, basically, with the poles and the flag and everything. They had to wrap this thing up. It's a nylon flag that they, I believe they bought at a hardware store. Um, and they folded it up tightly and packed it and attached it to, uh, the, I believe it was the ladder on uh, one of the lunar legs. Um, that, so that they could pull it out and uh, and plant it on the moon. And if you ever had anything that's nylon or polyester or anything, and you fold it up tightly, and then you unfold it, and you don't want it to look wrinkled, you're out of luck. You're going to have to iron it. In fact, that's what's going on here. The flag is wrinkly because it was wrinkled. It was folded up for a long time. Here you can see one of the astronauts actually about to latch it into, into place. Uh, and you can see how that, that horizontal rod was actually had to be lifted up to latch into place. And this is a this classic photograph uh, of um, Charlie Duke and John Young on the moon in Apollo 16. Uh, and they did a Navy jump salute where you jump up and salute. Uh, and, and, and I always tell people this is clearly fake because he's not even touching the ground. Come on, NASA, figure this out. Um, well, there is uh, Charlie Duke doing, the, doing a saluting uh, from a slightly different angle. They swap cameras and... Uh, John took Charlie's picture and Charlie took John's picture. And I can put these two together. And um, you can see that even though the pictures were taken 42 seconds apart, right? The flag is in exactly the same shape. Now you tell me if you can take a flag that's flapping in the wind and take a picture, 42, two, two pictures, 42 seconds apart and get it in exactly the same configuration. Of course, NASA spent billions. I'm sure they could have figured out some way to do this, um, but it's just silly. It's just a silly claim. Clearly what's going on here is, is they're just manipulating that, that rod and it's, it's just moving it around. Now, um, these are a handful of the claims from this conspiracy show. Um, there are several more that they did. Why didn't the lander, when it came down on the moon, blast a huge crater in the surface? And they talk about it had 10,000 pounds of thrust. And it's like, yeah, well, thrust is a force. What you want is pressure. And when you actually figure out the pressure of that rocket plume on the surface of the moon, it's roughly the same as the pressure the astronauts' boots exerted per square inch. Uh, on, on the surface of the moon, and they weren't blasting craters as they walked around on the moon. Uh, so it's, it's things like that. You're confusing basic science. You're withholding information. Um, you're speaking in a conspiratorial tone. Uh, that is going to prime people into thinking that something's going on. And I, that show, it was what, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever, uh, went into a handful of these claims. Some of the biggest claims, certainly. Uh, they talked about radiation in space, and, and completely mixed up particle radiation versus ionizing uh, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, you know, they talk about using, they talk about going through the Van Allen belts and they needed, you know, 12 feet of lead. And it's like, yeah, you don't use lead to block particle radiation. That's worse. You get secondary radiation. And no, you know, it, it, it 
the spacesuits and and everything else was enough to protect them from solar x-rays. And they were only in the Van Allen belts for a, a very short time. And in fact, the astronauts did get a, an elevated dose of radiation, but not enough to make them sick. Uh, and so it's just stuff like this. You, you use buzzwords, you know, people hear about radiation and they think, oh my gosh, radiation. Um, and, and, and so it's very easy to fool people with these kind of conspiracy theories. Um, This is a wine label that I had faked, and this, this cracks me up. This is real. Um, my wife and I moved to California some years ago, and we went to a, 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 a winery, and the winery had a, uh, a, a Cabernet with a picture of Al Bean uh, from Apollo 12 standing. And there's this gorgeous picture of Al Bean standing on the moon. He's holding a, like a sample container. You can see some lunar regolith in it. Uh, and um, for whatever reason, because they like making fun labels, they um, they replaced the the sample container with a, a glass of their their cab, and um, put the uh, you can see the reflection in his visor, which would have normally been the lunar surface. Uh, they put the uh, the 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 mansion on their vineyard there, and and put in the moon and the earth. Uh, and they sold these labels for a dollar. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I bought one. And then years later, a friend of mine said, hey, I'm going to a meeting and I'm going to meet Al Bean. Do you want his autograph? And I said, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And I gave my friend this label and, um, and, and said, what do you want him to say? And I said, I want him to say to Phil. Yes, I was there, Al Bean. And it's exactly what he did. Uh, and it says Apollo 12 there on the bottom. This is one of my prized possessions. I have this all like, like a comic book collector, you know, with a first edition Superman or something. You want this under, under plastic and everything. And, uh, I love this and it, it cracks me up. It, um, but I've, I've actually seen so many claim. I mean, if you were to claim that this, this is evidence that NASA faked the moon landings, that would be about the same level of the conspiracy theory that we're seeing here. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, I love this photo. Uh, of all of the moon photos, uh, every, you know, a lot of people have their favorites. This is in my top two or three. That actually, that, that image of Al Bean is one of my favorites. Um, for one thing, actually, that the picture of Al Bean, when I, when I wrote my first book and I was writing the moon hoax chapter in it, um, I wasn't sleeping well. I was angry all the time. Uh, and, and my wife was actually noticing that I was upset a lot. And it's because I was reading about these theories and they were making me so angry. Um, first of all, I kind of like NASA, you know, for in, in general, NASA is doing good stuff. Um, 400,000 people worked on these Apollo missions, including my father who did uh, quality control for the NASA food program. Um, this is one of the crowning achievements of humanity. We may have done it for, for venal reasons to beat the Soviets, um, but what we got out of it is immense. And the fact that you're all here for this meeting uh, is, is one of the outcomes of, of the Apollo missions. And to claim that it's faked is aggravating. Um, I also have met some of the Apollo astronauts. Uh, I know some of the scientists who were involved with these missions. And so it was really easy to take this stuff personally. And as I was writing that chapter, it was really, really making my blood pressure go up. Uh, and one day I was going through all of the lunar images. There's the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. If you are unfamiliar with the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, uh, hie thee immediately to this website because they have every single image ever taken on the moon. And many of them were taken uh, before the, as the missions were being prepped and on the way to the moon in space. And they're all there and they're spectacular. And I was going through these images and I was looking at that picture of Al Bean standing on the moon with the, with the regolith in his hand. And as I was looking at it going, oh, well, there's, there's this and this, and he was standing there and there's dust on his suit and everything. And it, it's like, it occurred to me, it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's Al Bean standing on the moon. He is standing on the moon. And this, this wave of, 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 uh, of joy and uh, of uh, Carl Sagan called it the numinous, this, this, this sort of deep, almost religious uh, awe uh, of a situation. And, and at that point, um, I realized that I was okay with, uh, with these conspiracy theories because I knew that debunking them was the right thing to do. Uh, and, and, and moreover, giving people the tools that they needed to understand how to debunk these things for their own. And so this image, I, I, and again, this image I, I love as well, because there are conspiracy theories about this image as, as well. You know, if, if there's no water on the surface of the moon, how did the, how did the dust keep its shape? 
And it's like, well, if you actually take something really dry, like baking powder and throw it on the, on the, on the floor and put your foot in it, you will actually see it compress in the tread of your shoe. It's, this is, that's, that's a silly claim. Um, also, a lot of people say this was the first boot print on the moon. It's not. Um, that the, the boot print that uh, Neil Armstrong made when he said one small step for a man, though, that's probably gone. Right, that was the highest traffic area on the moon. It was at the bottom of the ladder that they went up and down several times, and so they probably there are probably boot prints all around there. But the original one's probably gone. This is one that was made by Buzz Aldrin as an experiment, so that people who studied regolith and who, somebody here who got who did the poster won the award about lunar. Uh, yeah, the, um, so you probably know more about regolith than I do um, by a long shot, um, but they wanted the regolith scientists back home to be able to have one pristine boot print to see how the, the surface compacted and to see what was, uh, how that all worked. And then he, you know, he, so he stepped forward, made the boot print, stepped back and took the picture. Uh, so it's not the first boot print. And also uh, pictures of, of Neil Armstrong's spacesuit showed that he has a smooth boot print. Uh, and, and so clearly, uh, NASA messed this up and it's like NASA, you know, the other, the other thing about these claims is like, you know, how dumb do you think NASA is? You know, it's like, oh gosh, we forgot to fake his boot treads uh, and things like that. And it's like, no, they were wearing overshoes on the moon so that when the dust wasn't getting into their suits and fouling things up and they put those little booties on and you can see pictures of them. It's very clear. Um, so yeah, sure, there's a lot of conspiracies about this particular picture, but this, this photo is synonymous. It's, it's, it's a metaphor, an allegory, whatever word you want to use, for humanity going to another world and setting foot there. Uh, it is such a gorgeous shot uh, of an alien world with a human presence literally imprinted on it. Um, and, and, yet, and yet, it can be used for these conspiracy theories. There is no... There's there's no depth too low to stoop to. And 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 again, right? Who cares? Who cares about Bart Sabrell? You guys haven't even heard of him, right? 20 years ago, he was famous. He had his 15 minutes of fame. Now who knows where he is? And a lot of these other guys. Um, but the thing is, you know, kids need to understand this stuff. Um, conspiracy theories, uh, th and this was one of the first ones on the internet. You may be aware that there are others on the internet. Uh, and that they go farther than just nerds uh, who are interested in the moon landings or the flat earth. And that there are people in, you know, and I said this at the time, I said, if we don't debunk this stuff now, at some point, you know, the neighbor of some congressman is going to over the fence, tell this person, Hey, you know, we faked the moon landings, right? And the next thing you know, we're going to have congressional hearings from, you know, accusing NASA of faking the moon landings and, and who knows what else. And now here we are 20 years later and um, there is a like a conspiracy wing to Congress. I, I don't think I need to get too political here, um, but we're in the middle of a pandemic and a lot of people believe that's a hoax. Uh, it's frightening. It's frightening. And although those have far more serious and profound and realistic and immediate repercussions than people who think the moon landings are fake, but it's all based on the same ideas. We are easy to fool, and there are people out there who want to fool us. And they may believe what they're saying. Bill Casing, Bart Sabrell, all these other folks, they may have absolutely 100% believed that these moon landings are fake. But I have run into a lot of these conspiracy theories about, remember the Maya apocalypse when the earth wasn't destroyed in 2012? Um, Nibiru, the planet that was going to destroy the earth in 2003? A lot of folks out there writing books and internet sites and getting on TV, and they do not believe a word of what they're saying. They're just there to rake in the cash. Uh, and, and the term con men is short for confidence man, somebody who gets your confidence. And once you believe that what they're saying is true, they own you. And they can make you think whatever they want. They can make you vote the way they want. And they can make you open up your wallet and pay for whatever they want you to. And that's why um, you need to understand how these things work. Not just the moon hoax, but all of this stuff. And so, finally, we can answer the question I showed you in the very first part of this conspiracy theory show. Did we land on the moon? Yes, we did. Thank you very much. And I'll leave you with that. That's how you can find me online. I'm going to put my belt back on. <laughs>
Thanks very much, Phil. That was that was fabulous. I think you have a rather appreciative uh, audience here. Thanks for fighting the good fight uh, on, on all of our behalf. So uh, do you have time for perhaps a question or two? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Is there um, so please step up to the microphone if you have a uh, if you have a question or perhaps there's one uh, online. I don't have an open computer right now, but Christina is just opening hers. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? You all understand the moon way better than I do. <laughs> I think. Can I uh, ask a question from Zoom? Please. Sure. This is uh, Noah. Thank you, Phil, for sharing that with us. One couple notes. Um, you know, we're about to do this again. What can we do to better educate people as we go along what's happening? I, you know, can we get ahead of this? The second thing is I'll, I put in the chat window for the other Zoomers, probably the first reference to the Apollo 11 moon landing being faked happened during Apollo 11. The Apollo in real time site has all of the audio from all of the, uh, uh, members of the, the of mission control and it records their conversations their phone calls and one of the flight controllers called his girlfriend and she said i don't believe what i just saw maybe half joking maybe not but this was born the moment it happened um and not just on fox tv in 2000 2001 so this has been around like you said for a long time festering and i think that fox program probably just brought the worst out of it but the the, the real question is what do we do now to get ahead of this? Right. Um, that's a tough question. Um, you could probably talk to, there are people who study conspiracy theories and people who study how to debunk things. And uh, one of the things people say is don't present the material and then debunk it, which is you know what I just did. Um, you do the sandwich first. You, you actually state something that's real, then state the, the, the misconception, then restate how, how you know it's real. Um, there, there are methods like that to do it. Um, one thing I think NASA should do is ignore the anybody who says this is all fake. It is not NASA's responsibility to uh, to go out and, and talk to every single crackpot out there and convince them that they went to the moon. Um, in fact, uh, a long time ago, I, I talked to some of the Apollo astronauts uh, at different meetings over the years, and most of them wouldn't even talk to me. They were so angry about this stuff. But a couple of them who understood, they were like, yeah, better you than me. And I said, yeah, there, it's not your job to, to prove that you went to the moon. You went to the moon. Um, I will happily take up that mantle and so will other people. Now, NASA wanted to get ahead of it. I mean, they could, uh, without actually acknowledging that people believe these conspiracy theories, just you know, do do what they're doing. Make education sites. Spend money on 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 public uh, communication and outreach. Uh, in general, NASA does a really good job about this. Uh, and it turns out that if you give people the tools um, to do this kind of thing, they'll do it. You'll find people who will make websites and give talks and and do all that kind of stuff to debunk the stuff without NASA having to really do much at all. Um, and I think I think that's basically what's going on. And uh, there are always going to be people who aren't going to believe this. And there's just nothing you can do about them. Um, you just have to you have to kind of head them off the pass and say, what are the kind of things these people are going to say? Uh, look look at historically what they say and try to pre bunk or pre debunk what they're going to do. Uh, and they'll find ways around that because that's what they do. That is what they do. Uh, and so you don't spend a lot of time on it. Um, if NASA were to actually, if somebody at, at at HQ were to say, you know, we really should think about this, I'm all for it. Yeah, absolutely, think about it and, and talk to the educators, talk to folks who do this kind of thing. Um, but in general, I wouldn't get people at NASA HQ to really talk about this on TV or anything like that. Because, you know, people used to say, look, we can debunk all these moon hoax believers by just showing them the lunar reconnaissance orbiter images of all of the Apollo sites. And I said, we have hundreds and hundreds of photos taken by the astronauts on the moon. Do you think they're going to believe another NASA mission of blurry photo? No, they're not. You can't use it. So you have to sort of train people on how to, how to talk to people about this sort of thing. Um, and at that point, that's, a, that's above my pay grade. But I think that there are things that they can do, and, and one of them is talk to the experts. I mean, that's, that's what NASA does, right? There are people out there who know how to do this. And if NASA were to fund them, I would find that to be a good idea. 
There was to, a comment that to make came a short in. story long. Sorry, there was a comment that came in while you were talking about the shadows uh, from Kaylin Gallagher, who said, as someone working on properly modeling land view scattering for input to regolith thermal models, I wish, in quotes, all shadows on the moon were crisp, dark, and perfect smiley face. Yeah, um, I didn't even, oh, huh. um, this talk could be six hours long. Um, just to debunk what was on that show. Um, they also don't really talk about the fact that the lunar surface isn't flat. Uh, and they show, it's like, why are these two astronaut shadows different lengths? And it's like, because one of them is standing at the bottom of a, of a, a, a slope and the other one is farther back. And so the guy who's farther back, his shadow is on flat land and the other guy's shadow goes up the slope. And so from that angle, it looks like his shadow is really shorter. That's it. And so there's, it's just stuff like that all the time. Uh, and it's maddening. Um, uh, pictures from the moon, they're like, uh, like they, 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 they talk about faking the back direct background. There's a mountain in the background that doesn't appear to move as the astronaut walks around. It's like, yeah, that mountain is several miles away. If I remove 20 feet in that direction, you know, that mountain doesn't look like it moves. There's all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, it's just, it's maddening. And that's why I'm saying they, I did a radio interview once where the host was taking calls live uh, never going to do that again. Um, and they, they asked me all the questions. Why aren't the shadows parallel? Why this? Why that? And at some point, um, one guy was asking some really detailed question about some minutia that was so trivial. And the host, bless him, jumped in and said, listen, this guy, Dr. Plate, just debunked like the biggest eight claims you have. You know, at what point do you stand back and say, I think we're done? You know, if these are your biggest claims that are easy to debunk, we don't have to worry about that trivia. There's some other thing going on that you don't know about, probably. And, and, and yes, that is it's Zeno's paradox. You never actually reach the point where you debunk something. You can just debunk as much as you can. And we had somebody here. Oh, OK. Oh, yes. So thanks so much. I really, really enjoyed that talk. Um, Thank so, you. So, you know, just I, I'm Akbar Wizen, by the way, Southwest Research. Uh, just out and about, you know, at NASA centers on tours and all these kind of things, we always encounter people who are asking this as you're like, oh, you seem like an expert. And so one of the ones I always say is like, um, well, we know the earth has one G and we know the moon has one six G. And so in the videos, you see dust and you see them jump and you see things and just do basic kinematics and it falls at one six G. That's actually in the show. Um, and they, uh, or was it at the show? I don't know. Oh, I haven't watched the whole thing in a long time because I'm a masochist. Um, but at one point, people, there's one of these claims that uh, when the lunar rover is moving and you see the dust flying off the back wheel, um, the dust doesn't, doesn't float in the air. Uh, and, and they start getting confused about the moon being airless and the moon having gravity. And you start to realize like these people really don't have any understanding of science at all. Uh, and, and I get that a lot of people don't have, you know, they don't understand how gravity works. They don't watching movies. You kind of get the idea that you can only have gravity if you're spinning or if there's air, you can hit a switch and suddenly there's gravity. Um, and I, and I tell people actually watch those videos, watch that, watch the regolith, the dust shoot up in a perfect parabolic arc, just about, I mean, the, the pieces are hitting each other and everything. So there's some hydrodynamics going on, but the, the you know, if, if you take a rock and throw it or just a little bit of dust and throw it up on the moon, it goes up in a parabolic arc and falls right back down. Seeing the reason it's, it doesn't billow is because there's no air on the moon, but there's one sixth gravity. And if you actually look at the frame rate of the video or the film and calculate this, you'll, you'll see that. Yeah. That that's behaving exactly as you expect. Um, and, and they say in, in the, oh yeah, that's it in this, uh, in the conspiracy theory thing, they show a video of an astronaut moving around on the moon. And they say, if you speed it up, um, by two and a half times, you, or they just say you speed it up. Um, it looks like they're walking normally. So clearly they filmed this on the earth and just slow the video down. And it's like, actually, no, because if they did that, then all their movements would be very comical that aren't gravity related. Like if I were just to wave to somebody, it would look like I'm waving like that if I were speeding it up. And in fact, you have to worry about what's called dynamic motion, which works with the square root of the ratio of the gravitational acceleration. And it turns out the square root of one sixth is about one over two and a half. And, and absolutely, if you speed those videos up by a factor of two and a half, anything that depends on gravity looks normal. Uh, if you drop a rock, it looks like it's falling on earth. Um, but their motions then are sped up and you can clearly see that's not what's going, that's not what's going on. So it, it's so some of this, again, you have to know the math, you have to, or just, you just have to know like basic photography or anything like that to understand what's going on. So yes. And, 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 and that's the other thing I want to say. 
a lot of the ways to debunk conspiracy theories is right in the evidence they show you. They're showing you a picture. Chances are what they're saying wrong is in that picture. It's in that video. And you just have to know how to look for it. And, and then you'll say, oh, yeah. So the, the, you know, the evidence of conspiracy that, that you know, they just sped the video up is actually evidence that they filmed this in one-sixth gravity in a gigantic airless environment. So I'm thinking it was on the moon. We have one, right. Did we have one? We have one Is more. There, Do we have time? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, one I'll more. I'll stand up what? here all day. I live an hour yeah. away. I don't have to go home anytime soon. One more question. Yes, this is Mark Leinwald from the Netherlands. Uh, I really enjoyed your your presentation here. It's, Thank you. It's really lovely to see that uh, that I'm not the only one being frustrated by these kind of things. Um, I have to go on, on Dutch radio every now and then to talk to people about the flat earth and all those kind of things. So that's kind of special as well. So if you ready with watching movies like this there's a flat earth uh, one on on youtube as well which is kind of a, kind of funny uh but there's another thing that i wanted to, to share with you which is related related to the moon uh, i was uh, asked to give a presentation uh, for business people in the city where i live in harlem uh, just a couple of weeks ago and i was talking to someone from the stock market and he was he was trying to convince me that the fluctuations in the stock market are actually related to the lunar uh, 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 periods, so so the, the lunar cycles, and uh, and he was he keeps on telling me those things and and showing me numbers and he wrote a whole book about this. Have you ever heard about this? So if you, you know. Uh, uh, it's related to the moon, so I'm... it so that sounds familiar. Um... The, the two things that, that people love to try to map stuff to, as far as cycles go, are the lunar cycle and the sunspot cycle. Um, and it's almost what we call, it, it's almost always what we call anomaly hunting, yeah. um, where you, you, you have a huge amount of evidence. Um, you know, it's like you flip a coin a million times, yes. you know, a couple of those flips aren't going to go the way you expect. And so you, and you zoom in, I'm going to go, aha. And then what you realize you flip the coin a million times, you know, so something, yeah. something strange is going to happen. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing here. Uh, uh, climate change deniers love to do this where they take plots of the earth warming. And if you have like a, a small amount of time where the earth doesn't seem to warm much, and then they zoom in on that. And what they ignore is this, you know, the 50 years behind it where this thing is screaming up and then just, just random fluctuations yeah. you expect at some point that uh, yet yeah, you can, it, when you look at the entire trend, yeah, the trend seems to be clear, but if you go in really, really tight on like five years, it looks flat. It's yeah. exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, it, now, if, if, if he were to show beyond a doubt, uh, you know, we have lots of evidence of lunar cycles. We have tons of evidence uh, about the you know mapping the stock market, but does he look at every single stock? Does he look at the Fortune I, 500? Does he look I at the S and P? Know. You know, and so you can you can cherry pick, which is the other thing yeah. conspiracy theorists do, yeah. to to figure out, you know, I'm going to ignore all this other data and zoom in on this yeah. and make it look like you know something is going on here. Um, there has been a long, long, long uh, bit of searching to see if the solar cycle is connected in any way to the periods of the planets. Yeah. And, um, you know, for years it was, it, no, obviously not. But then there's like, there's this really super weak connection with the synodic periods of like Jupiter and Saturn and everything. And I still have to figure out if that's real or not. It's so weak that you have to wonder, is just, is this coming up by random chance? And it's just always what you have to think. Are, am I seeing all the data? Is it being cherry picked? Um, do I expect from random, you know, do I expect to get five heads in a row if I flip a coin uh, a thousand times? Yes, you, you absolutely it would be really weird if you didn't get five heads in a row if you flipped a coin a thousand times or, you know, for whatever number of N you want. So it, it's exactly the same thing. It's statistics. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, yes. you, if, if, if you yes. want me to believe, you can show me all that data. If you want me to believe that the stock market is tied to the cycles of the moon, yeah. I want to see the physical connection. Yeah, yeah. What is what is the actual uh, causal mechanism going on? Exactly. Here? Yeah. 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 That's why I said with the planets yeah. and the sunspots, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. you know, the planets orbiting the sun. At least maybe there could be some connection there. But with the moon and and yeah. you yeah. know, I don't think I don't think stock stockbrokers are really caring about what phase the moon is in. Well, no. I don't think that, and then they, they seem to not know statistics, so that's kind of scary, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. All right. Well, let's give. Then, uh, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah.
I think one of the things that I was thinking, fabulous um, presentation, Phil, one of the things that I was thinking is that uh, this underscores the importance for all of us, all of us, not just the EPO people, but all of us to to engage with the public, to educate them. I kind of, I suppose I kind of think of it as, as a, a vaccination in a way. It's not going to be 100% effective. You know, there's always going to be people that are, um, that are going to be susceptible to these things. But the more we do, the more we um, let people know what the real truth is, um, the less power these, uh, these things are going to hold. So again, thank you for fighting the good fight for all of us.